Were you guys proud of me for when Kalila was like, I have some pants you can try on that I didn't go, are you kidding, bitch? Am I going to fit your fucking <laughs> I, uh, pants? <laughs> are you serious? No, they're going to fit you. They're these types. They're the stretchy, oh, like, stretchy. one size fits Ooh, all. Oh, I like that. Then yeah. why wasn't I offered them? Because, because you're ugly. <laughs> you're half my size, Esther, and these are going to be real pants for you, not um, cutoffs. When <laughs> Esther said that she had short bell bottoms and we both thought about <laughs> shorts styled in bell bottoms. With the bells at the knees. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to make that. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Blood Bath. It's a show where there's no murder yet. Where we punch Esther until she bleeds and we throw in a bathtub. <laughs> We may get into a fight because we disagree about everything, but we're still best bud. It's blood bad. Welcome. Oh my God. She also has like a little cotton mouth, so it's ASMR. <laughs> it's a cotton mouth, you po. <laughs> I really do. Whenever I think about the three of us, for some reason, I love referring to us as old fat whores. <laughs> I, it's like my addiction. I, I don't know why. I just love that we're we're just old fat. Just take it out of the haters' mouths before they can try. Well, it was interesting to see how everyone views themselves when we were trying to pick a name. Because we wanted bitch beach and Esther goes, I've never, Esther's like, I've never been, I'm not a bitch. I've never been called a bitch. I'm like, I have single-handedly called you a bitch so many times that I. Why am I still wearing a mask? You're just, you're in the life. Because yeah. we, even though we're, we tested negative, you, we didn't get like gonorrhea tests, so. That's true. She doesn't want Esther's um, crotch rot. What do you call that? Uh <laughs> Crotch rot. That's so funny. <laughs> the only other person I've ever say crotch rot is my dad. <laughs> Wait, what is? It's like from the fifties. <laughs> I know, but is that was that just like an umbrella term for any and all STDs? I would just. I think that it's usually. I would assume it's more of a um, like an underwear is kind of stanky. I, you mean a Wednesday? An what do you mean a Thursday? <laughs> no. An itch. I will say that different parts of the month um, have different aromas right and yeah. also yeah. if i'm really anxious it also my body gives off a different it's the same oh. you have the same glands in your armpits as the ones you do in like your pubic area and when you sweat when you're anxious it's a different smell than when you sweat when you're working out it says we're, we're low self-esteem come get us you know, here they go, the three old whores talking about their <laughs> rotting crotches <laughs> right out the gate. I was thinking of like an athlete's foot of the crotch. It's like guys would get it. Crotch rot's more of a man thing. That's why I... I feel like that's our log line. Three old whores. Yes, it is. Three old fat whores. <laughs> but we look, younger, way, we look younger than we are, but we'll remind you. No, that's that we're not. That's why. <laughs> that's why it's because we're all hot and we are not old. Like that's why I like it. Also, I just had to address a negative comment that was like, "Look at them five minutes in, they're talking about their vaginas." It's like, sir. Yeah, you talk about our vaginas. So let us talk about them. But also, <laughs> do you have you had a girlfriend for longer than a week? Like, what? Have you had a peer, a girlfriend for one full month ever? <laughs> Who cares? Like, I am okay. I am not. I'm not. I'm not doing well today because my car wouldn't start. Oh, yeah, what happened? So that's Annie had to drive over? Wait, she calls me panicking. She has her makeup done, which is, I, I'm panicking. Once I see her makeup done, I go, what's, are you okay? Did someone die? Are you going somewhere important? Are you stepping in your casket? Are you okay? Has someone, has someone done your makeup for your final departure? Um, I've just been embalmed. <laughs> I wanted to do it, like, while I'm still, all right. <laughs> Never mind. So... And she goes, why is this happening? You're, because your car is from 1992. It's from 2001. Which Have is the 1992 of 2000. 2020. What's your make and model, Esther? It's a uh, 2001 Toyota Camry. And it sounds exactly like this. <laughs> well, it no, used that's, to. Yeah, that's moving. <laughs> But I'm really sad. I've had this car. You know, this is the car I drove myself to ballet class in when I was 18 and I got my license two years late. And now it's it didn't work. It didn't start today. So I'm, I'm sad. Did you have your little ballet slippers on when you drove? <laughs> you have no. your, little, your little toe point shoes on? <laughs> you no. little bound feet while you drove? No, bitch. <laughs> Were you wearing your tutu? Did you ever get your tutu stuck in the door? We only wore tutus for our recitals, not for class. 18-year-old ballerinas, first of all, exist? <laughs> no, but I'm... Were you in a kid's ballerina class because of your height? 
<laughs> the first thing I did, my car won't start. I called Andy. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, my car won't start. And she was very nice. She's like, we'll come get you. I'm like you got part of it right. It's AAA. It's not call Andy. <laughs> <laughs> then I call my dad. And of course my mom answers. And I'm like, my car won't start. And she has a big smile on her face. She's like, oh, I guess you have to get a new car. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not giving up. I'm going to call AAA tomorrow. Wait, is also, this the first time that yeah, it's, it's ever broken down? Yes. It's just she's acting oh, like the car's done forever. It, it, yeah. Ever to jump your car your battery's dead yeah it's there's a good chance your battery's just dead <laughs> we could have probably fixed it at the house when we picked it up really yeah oh, thank god i really do like i think that the car really um <laughs> is your brand thank you and yeah I, maybe... dented disgusting <laughs> filled with trash it smells bad the smell nobody was... wants it I... the, <laughs> the fender's hanging off it's not funny <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really unfunny people get very serious around it i will say that when i got into it this morning i was like this smell has taken a turn <laughs> In what direction? Like unmanageable direction. Like where the Taco Bell was ordered vegan style, but then now it has cheese. <laughs> like, wow, it's de veganed itself. <laughs> Wait a second. Esther, was this the very first car you purchased in your life? Purchased? I, I, no. Gifted? Gifted. <laughs> and how old were you? Um, I didn't, so I was, I never had a car in high school. Mm -hmm. I still have dreams about it. Thank God. She couldn't, they didn't have enough phone books to have a real one. <laughs> like, I still have dreams, like, how I wish I had a car so bad. And I didn't have a car in college. And we couldn't afford it. And then when I quit school, I was like, I'm, I'm going to LA. I need a car. Mm. I'm doing this with or without you. And my dad, it was like time for him to get a new car, kind of, because it was already 10 years old. Um, so. That's such a rude thing to do. Like, I'm giving up on my dreams and making you proud and also give me a car <laughs> how old were you guys when you got your licenses i was 16 i got it right away 18 and then when when did you actually start to drive drive because i know you live you lived in philly and in the city right and in chicago oh wait you weren't you're in skokie yeah skokie suburb so you have to drive around home of, to get around home of the world's best bagels and pita in the best mediterranean food is that the, is that true yes Mediterranean too? Yes. It's so Why? weird that if you were to be a food, you would be a bagel or a pita. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing really there until you add something else. <laughs> what are you, the, the cream cheese? Yeah, I'm the creamy, crusty cheese. <laughs> I'm the everything. <laughs> the everything. The seasoning. So going back to the embalming, Esther. Mm, earlier, yes. earlier, when you embalmed yourself <laughs> earlier before you walked in. I wanted to ask you guys what your thoughts are, are on live funerals. What? When people have their funerals before they pass. They, have you ever heard of that? Um, I think I saw it on Empire Records. A living yeah. funeral. Yeah, that's what it's called, right? A living yeah. funeral. Like the in Weatherman with Nicolas Cage, um, where he basically hosts his dad's funeral and the dad <laughs> attends. And everyone's there, so you hear every what everyone wants. They're parting words for you. Oh, my God. Yeah. The thought of a live funeral funeral living funeral is very sad to me I'm, i like it makes me cringe i don't know i don't it makes me uncomfortable you don't want to see your child casket <laughs> you don't <laughs> see your baby casket <laughs> you'd rather they talk about you afterwards you, well it's so sad everyone would be so sad do you think that they'd be that's more... really presumptuous <laughs> your mom would be like this is a little easier for me i'll be real this is kind of nice <laughs> No, but that's always what I wonder. Is someone more complimentary about you before you die or after you die? After. That's after. what I'm saying. So it's like, wouldn't you want them to say to, you know, like... They won't mean it until I'm gone. Exactly. So it's it's a weird... It's a fool's errand. This is like a... It's a... It can't really ever be. I like the idea of being the person that tells the truth at the funeral. Like yeah. you just go and you go, this person was like very mediocre. I mean, <laughs> at best. Is that, is that, are you practicing my eulogy? <laughs> <laughs> Have I'm you like, guys ever delivered a eulogy? No. no. Oh, but can I tell you about my grandfather's funeral? Mm -hmm. So my grandfather died f actually like four years ago, like to the day pretty much that we're recording this, maybe a few days. And Dave came to his funeral with me and we were sitting towards the front row. My grandmother was in front of us and my aunt, who is, is, you know, his daughter, gave a speech and she was kind of going on about like how he actually loved poetry and just kind of saying all this stuff. And, um, and as soon as, or no, not, I'm sorry, before she, right before she ended, my grandma just sits there and she, we just, me and Dave hear her go, way too much. <laughs> <laughs> 
And to this day, like, and they're like, me and Dave were just laughing in the second row of my grandfather's funeral. And we always say it to each other now, like, randomly. It's like our inside joke way too much. Cause it's so, it's so nasty to say to someone that's like giving a speech at their own dad's funeral. It's so mean. I do feel like if the spouse is alive, though, and someone dies, you are performing for that. It is about them. Yes. It's not as much about the person. Like, if my. Gra- well, I don't, I've never did I. And he's like, I'm I don't not human. My grandparents' funerals. Well, you I'm were so born young. out of an egg, right? <laughs> I was hatched. A shark egg. <laughs> I was incubated. <laughs> I was at the bottom of the sea. That's why I like crab legs so much. No, but what were you gonna say that it's f- the funeral? No, it's like for- it should be if the if the spouse is alive, you should be just doing what they want. You should be making them happy because they're next. I actually, <laughs> I don't agree. If it's your own, like if if it's your. Maybe if you're, I don't know. I don't agree. I can't. Find yeah, I guess. Yeah, if one of my parents died, I wouldn't be thinking about my other parents. Yeah, it'd be, because if it's because it's her daughter. Yeah. It'd be your moment. At my dad's. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very jazz handsy. I'm like, all right, hit it. One, two, three. <laughs> At my dad's funeral, um, well, it wasn't a real funeral. Funeral. It was like a, a home service, if you will. Um, we had this woman. Her name was Sister Cleo. So when I first, when we first the came, psychic, almost, you know, she kind of had the same. She was a black woman. She was like really just the most loving, affectionate woman. But when we first came from the Philippines, my dad had fallen into step with like a Nigerian Mennonite church. I don't know how or why, but my first few months in America were purely around this church. Like we would go to Sunday testimonials. Like my sister would do like the Ric Flair dead man's drop, like to pretend like she, the, the spirit had had overtaken her. <laughs> so when my dad died, um, these people came over to our house, maybe just like five of them. And Sister Cleo insisted on singing Amazing Grace. And you would think that, you know, she was going to just you know, have a stellar performance, but she was so (laughs) off-key. My sister and I had to face the wall because we were crying. We were crying. We could not hold our laughter in. That was the perfect time for your sister to pretend to be possessed. (laughs) Just take over the show, but do it on rhythm. (laughs) Maybe she could follow her. (laughs) Kalila, I've been wanting to ask you something. So Annie and I both have old dads. How old was your dad when you were born? Well, it's actually sad because he was... 42, I think, when I was born, but it felt like he was elderly. The entire 42. Time. So mine was 44, and I feel like we've bonded. We have really right. old dads. But then Kalila rolls up. <laughs> and how old was your dad when you were born? Not only is my dad dead, and not only did he die. He was the oldest man living on the <laughs> earth before <laughs> he went. <laughs> um, you guys, my dad was... He was in World War II. He went through the Great Depression. Like, he was born in 1924. So when he died, he was 79. That was in 2003. But how old was he when he when you were born? Esther's car was only two years when old. I was, when I was born, he was already in his... He was 62. So you're, like, old sperm. I am super old sperm. That's why I think I have a lot of weird... Um, no, that's you're why you're miracle. attracted to Bobby Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I always used... You know what? There's never been a time where I've ever considered dating someone younger than me. Yeah, me like, I've Oh, accident- try it out. <laughs> try it out. It's I've so accidentally... Good. Like, I've definitely had sex with guys younger than me, but never have I ever, th- like, even considered someone... Or having a life with someone younger. Same. My um, my friend said to me, I was talking to him, I was like, yeah, I'm dating this this younger guy, but I'll probably, you know, it's not going to last because if I want to have kids and get married, i got to go with an older guy. And he goes, where are the old ones now? He goes, are you kidding? <laughs> he goes, you're so dumb. He's like, put them to work. You got like a young one. They'll do stuff for you. They send emails. Just get them going. I have a theory. They play with their kids. I'm like, that is a great, I was like, it changed my whole perspective. I have this theory that men don't, this is a generalization, not always true, but men don't really respect women their own age. They can only really respect women older than them or younger than them. Thoughts? Prayers? I don't think that the guys that date young women respect them. Yeah, yeah, I think that. it's they're, they're going, oh, I'm going to get less. Mm-hmm. I don't have to. So Dave doesn't respect me? You I, are you? Of course he doesn't. <laughs> Who would? 
<laughs> yeah, you know, there is a sense of <laughs> um, you ain't shit vibe that I get from Bobby. Really? Especially when he talks about pop culture. Mm -hmm. um, he just treats me like, ooh, you young kids, you wouldn't know. Yeah. That vibe. But you're right. There is an air of I'm better than you. And I, I had, always will be. Yeah, I had uh, I dated a guy who was 12 years older than me. And every thing I said, he'd be like, you'll understand one day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, your horrible. life is bad. <laughs> if I'm attracted to you, you're not doing well. That's the worst. I dated a guy when I was 22 and he was 37. That guy, that narcissist we talked about. And he would always use my age against me. That's I, I couldn't have met a more infantile man in my life. But every time there was an argument, it was always like, yeah, you're reacting that way because of your age. I get it. They're just yeah. so condescending. Yeah. When I was in my 20s, I dated a guy who was like, oh, I just, he was, he'd always say like, Ugh, like, I wish I knew you when, when you're 30 because you're going to be so much more mature. Ew. I feel like I should call him and be like, hey, guys. Look at me now. <laughs> Do you want to hear what happened to me? My car broke down for the first time in my life. I cried and called my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no joke. This is, I can't believe him. This is so weird. I was on a date once with a guy who was much older. That is so weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, that I met at the comedy store. And scary. Not, it's not someone you, you know. He's That's the scary. Line. I went on a date with an older man I met at the comedy store. It's the most terrifying line I've ever Well, I have about heard. 15 more stories like that. And we were like trying to decide what movie to see. And just, I was must have just turned 21. Like I was so still in the daughter mindset that I'm like, I don't know what movie we should see. Hold on, I'm going to call my dad. And I, and I, on the date, I call my dad. I was like, dad, like what's good? And the guy that I was on the date with was just like, that was weird. And I like could not understand what he I thought it was weird. weird. Because you're fucked up. <laughs> I know, because I would call my dad at, at any point. <laughs> hey, do you mind? Wait, can you just take it out for one second? I have to call my dad. <laughs> at 21, were you still in your Abercrombie um, stage? Is she not in it? Look at her pants. No, because I saw a picture of you, and I think we had the exact same skirt. It was the one like that's like two-layered little ruffle. Yeah, no, that was when I was 16. <laughs> Oh. I didn't wear skirts. After I got to college, the skirts didn't fit. After you, the diapers <laughs> showed up in your life. I every time you've worn a skirt. What? You've worn a skirt twice in front of me. I yeah. remember every time. One was for your special and one was a couple months before. You, and I filmed your set because like, this is the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> when you look like a girl, I'm in such shock. I'm like, what is this woman? <laughs> Who is this? Wait, but Kalila, so your dad was very old when you were made. What was that like when you, I was a maid? When you were ma <laughs> when, when you were a maid. When you were a, a maid. That's why you had her. He needed more help cleaning around the house. Did you? How did that affect you? Like, were you like, oh my god, my dad's so old, he's gonna die? Yeah. Like, I was so embarrassed for him to come pick me up in school or do any of the PTA stuff, and I would lie and say, yeah, that's my grandpa. <laughs> I weirdly had a thing with my dad where you said PTA. I was thinking of PDA. When my dad would hold my hand, <laughs> with even dad. when I was so young, I would be. And we're in, we're not in Los Angeles, but I was yeah. just like, I don't want people to think I'm dating this old man. I just had that thought in my head. I used to have a joke about that. Yeah, because where people, when I was with my dad in the Midwest, people thought he was my grandfather. But then in LA, <laughs> they thought it was my boyfriend. <laughs> 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 Which, like, that joke still works. It still stands. It does. It's so weird. Yeah, it's a strange thing. It's also even stranger to be a product of such a large age gap. Because I never want to think of my parents in that way where you're like, oh, yeah, um, he was just a really um, opportunistic old man that landed in the Philippines. Have we talked about this? No. So, like, this is a massive insecurity of mine. So I, when I look at older white men and young Filipinas in the Philippines, you see that a lot, right? It's kind of like a, not a mail order bride, but they actually go over there. They don't get mailed here. They do 90 day fiance, they do, they do it fiance. right, they get on TV. <laughs> yeah, so I always, I cringe at all of those uh, anytime I see that, but then I'm th I, I keep thinking that shit, like from afar, I am a product of that kind of love. And thankfully my, I really do believe my mom and dad genuinely loved each other, mm -hmm. but still it's like, no one's gonna know that they're they're just gonna look at it from afar and be like ooh, like 30 old white man with you know young filipina but could you use it as a way to stop your judgment towards those relationships of other people because who cares what other people think right no because there really is like a disproportionate amount of amount of really disgusting old men that mm -hmm. just kind of like view 
um, young Filipinas as like their vacation or their like Ew. last desperate ditch at like being with a woman. And they're preying on the fact that these women are so like financially like, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, they're, it's a third world country. So they're like, oh yeah, um, her desperation to get out of there is my in. And so, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's complex. And I think that there is something to be had for both of them. They're both being opportunistic. I just mm -hmm. don't know if, if I like it. Well, were you close with your dad? Um, it was hard to get close to someone born in 1924. Wow. His Gen walker was in the way. <laughs> <laughs> with a tennis ball. No, he was such a cool guy. He was a linguist. He was so well-traveled. He was brilliant. He had an IQ that um, no one in my family could ever match. Um, I, he was just a brilliant man. But because of that, he was just a little colder. Mm -hmm. Not co I'm, I'm sure he meant to be warm. But it, you just it's just too big of a generational gap. His skin gap. was thinning, so he was just very chilly. <laughs> <laughs> he was like i'm cold please i, I think you're thinking of me <laughs> are you closer Esther is elderly oh, are you closer to your moms or dads i'm close to my closer to my dad but i'm definitely i've been on a mom kick very close very close to both in very different ways mm. but i would say everyone calls me like mini mo like because my dad's name is maury everyone says i'm like exactly him in like a female version so I like to think I have a little bit of my mom's looks, but then with my dad's scams. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you must be very close with your mom though. I, I don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> I only have one, you know, living parent at this point. I feel similar though. Like my parents are, are 15 years apart. My dad's 15 years older than my mom. And I, there's something like, creepy about that and I, my dad always talks about like and I, I appreciate his honesty about it he's like you know when you're a young guy you always think you can do better so he never wanted to get married and settle down and so it's weird to like think of my how old were they though when they got together how old was your dad uh he was probably like 43 when they got together yeah. and then my mom wanted to get married and he didn't want to so they broke up and then oh my god and what did she do <laughs> no she didn't do an ultimatum well, no, she did, and then it didn't work. She said, like, I'm, I want to get married. Let's break. They broke up. And then his, they didn't speak for, like, six months, and his mom passed away. And my mom is, like, such a sweet. She's just very sweet. And to so, everyone but Esther, though, Yes, honestly. correct. <laughs> and so she called him, and she was like, um, I'm really sorry. You know, my condolences. And he, my dad was just like, what are you doing? And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, come over. And then this famous story, I can't believe I'm telling us this, is that. Is this sex? That that night. He he was like I, I want to like be with you and get married. And she was like I don't believe you. And he's like I'll prove it to you. And you know what happened? Whoa. They Anal? had no, <laughs> <laughs> no baby Esther was made. Ew. Wow, that night? Yes, you're a funeral baby. <laughs> I don't know if it was like it was probably sh Shiva. Hey guys, say hi to Lenny. That's my Raven. What? Oh God, she's a witch. <laughs> we know it. Yeah. Too good to be Those true. Those are my two ravens. They live right above us. I feed them. I throw raw meat on top. <laughs> raw meat? You don't even feed them vegan? That's so rude. Well, they don't want vegan. That's not a choice I make for them. Listen, Esther has some newly de-veganed food in her car back <laughs> at her house. We'll have to go pick some up. <gasps> Please take it off my hands. <laughs> Esther, wow. You, so there was a big proclamation of love, and then it was insemination right after. Yeah, it was like a proof that they'll be together. So, so yeah. Oh. And you have been so annoying that they have had to stay together. <laughs> Neither of them can handle you on their own, that you've bound them. So they got married at a courthouse while my mom was a few months pregnant with me by oh, a blind judge. Oh. Blind judge? Yeah. Oh, I like that. I wonder if, it's, if it counts, <laughs> if they couldn't see it. <laughs> a witness <laughs> did they wait for him like he had a waiting list that's why it was a couple months <laughs> wait did they we gotta get the blind guy the bloodbath babes are here to talk to you about blue chew blue chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as viagra and cialis but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost if you have trouble swallowing. <laughs> Blue Chew's tablets combat all forms of ED and can help men gain extra confidence for when it's time to perform. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple, guys. 
sign up at bluechew.com consult with one of their licensed medical providers and once you're approved you'll receive your prescription within days the best part it's all done online and then success i wish that this was a service available for like everything because this is so perfect like you get to chew it you do it online yeah they should get it just to erect your body to do exercise <laughs> <laughs> Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct. So it's cheaper than a pharmacy. Ooh, I love I love a cheap cheap option. Blue Chew's Sildenafil and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here. And don't snort them, guys, okay? Chew. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. So you guys, if you could benefit from extra confidence in the bedroom when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATHGIRLS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code BATHGIRLS to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Can I just say, though, it's literally free and you just pay shipping. So if this is something that you even considered in life, now is the time to get it to support our show. Try something for free and just pay shipping. Bluechew.com promo code BATHGIRLS. And to support your own penis. Yeah, and Truly. guys, we're not in college anymore. We don't need any ramen noodles, okay? Keep, we Noodles are stay in the dorm, all right? <laughs> we want hard things. Wait, okay, speaking of parents... Annie, this is something I've been I've been dying to ask you. Okay, there's something that I've heard of. It's called Landmark, and I've only heard of it because Cafe Gratitude, this like very culty restaurant, makes all their workers sign up for it, and it's supposed to be this like scam thing. Ugh. But you've told me that you've not only you've done it, you your parents do it. Can you explain what it is and if it's? It was 18 years. My parents have been doing Landmark. 18 Wait, years. They're still fully committed. Mm -hmm. What is that? What? Is, what's going I'm on? I'm terrified of Landmark. Okay, one of you needs to tell me what it is. Okay, it's a, it's a seminar series. So you go for a weekend. You go for I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you come back Monday or Tuesday. It's four days, I think. And it cost back in the day. It cost I think it cost like. Eight hundred dollars. I mean, I'm not about to sign up. No, no, no. I, it, these <laughs> I are all important. These are. <laughs> should we just individually different times? We can't all bunk there together, but we have to go at different times. It's not. Kalila, tell me what it is, because this is what I know at least about the Hoffman Institute, which is sort of like it jumped off from Landmark. It came from Est, which was in the '70s. Which yeah. Est got in a lot of trouble because they weren't letting people pee or go to the bathroom yeah. and stuff. It's it's the <laughs> idea that you basically break down somebody psychologically <gasps> so that you rebuild them so it's basic it the end goal is to eliminate trauma 10 years worth of trauma in like a couple days right or in like a week i recommend ayahuasca is way more fun and so like i hear that you do role-playing game like <gasps> you're a pig like you do farm animal stuff mm -hmm. but what i found most sketch is that when i look at the sites they never list the qualifications of any of the people working there. In fact, they don't even list the names and it is so much money. So it's like, I think they prey on people's, like rich people's like desperation. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's so, it, there's no farm animal things unless that's a new thing that they started doing, but they have a landmark forum leader and you're all in this room. There's nothing on the walls. There's all uniform chairs that mm -hmm. aren't very comfortable. They give you like a big pen and a form, you know, mm -hmm. so everything's very neutral. There's nothing else, yeah. And they just do a, a bunch of stuff and, and you fight it and people fight it and then they call it, you have a breakthrough. It's like your popcorn moment or something. It's called some, I, I did it when I was 19, so it was forever ago. So it's, is it like a culty scam thing? I think it, like where, a, where it becomes, if it was just one weekend and mm -hmm. they didn't pressure you to keep coming back and to bring more people, yeah. I would say yes. I would say that it's, or no, that it's it's just like a, a nice, weekend. a weekend of like intense therapy like yeah. stuff with people that are not qualified, yeah. but they but, aren't. But your parents but, are still doing it. So right, because what they do is then you have this feeling of euphoria where they pretty much at the end, they tell you that your life is empty and meaningless and and then that you have nothing. So then you choose everything. So it was to the point where I, okay, so at the end, you're supposed to, whenever you have a, any relationship that you feel is not where you want it to be or you've had any falling outs with people, you're supposed to find your fault in that. And they give you a formula. Like, I was doing this, 
and I would get this from it, but the cost was this, and now I want to create the possibility of this. So you're now going into these conversations with people who may not really deserve to talk to you or may not be someone that you even need to speak to ever and again, and you're coming to them with a formula. It is good to accept your responsibility and things, but I was to the point where I was going to call my teacher who assaulted me. Oh, my God. And apologized to him. And, and, and there's no one to tell me not to do. There's no, like, psychologist to be like, don't do that. So I was about to, This it was three years after all that happened. So I was about to call him and apologize to him for making a big deal out of things. Because yeah. life is just, these are all just stories. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's where it was really, to me, very dangerous. And they do it for kids. They do landmark form for, for young people. That, to me, is really scary. I don't think you should be putting, like, formulas in kids' heads. Mm -hmm. do I think you, you want to let them develop. And do you feel like your parents are in some kind of a cult right now? Is I that used to be really upset about it. And I, the reason I left Landmark was because, well, I started to feel like their words were in my head. I didn't like having other, I'm like, why would someone else's words be in my head? Mm -hmm. You know, and they go, there's no right and wrong. But if there's no right and wrong, why did you tell me what I'm supposed to say to right. people? And what is the point of, like, even even that invalidates all of your feeling yeah. of feeling wrong about something I think or it feeling can help right people, about situations. But I think it can help people if they're at a specific place. You know, like it's, it yeah. certainly doesn't go that's what, that's completely what the problem dark is. for everyone. Like there is no, to me, there's not like a clear science behind it. Mm -hmm. And like that always worries me. It just sounds to me very, um, um, I guess evangelical. Yeah. Like where there is a degree of brainwashing involved yeah. and there is a degree of like really, really um, breaking someone down right. to the point where it's like that then bec they become the only like salvation yeah. is landmark. And um, I find that to be really predatory. Yeah. And I think, but the thing that where it gets bad is where they go and you need to like, and come back. And if you don't have money, they go, why are you letting money stop you? You know, <gasps> get the like, you, that's can, you know, so that's not good. And then um, they go, all these people that you've broken relationships with, bring them on Tuesday night to the, and then they give them an introduction. So it's like, they're essentially sucking all these people in. Yeah. So then it's like you bring people and then they really pressure you to bring people. Have you enrolled people? Who have you enrolled? My mom would go to our neighbor's house. We were the worst neighbors. OK, I love my family <laughs> and we're fucking crazy and we've been through a bunch of shit. But when I left and I look back and I go, oh, we were the problem. <laughs> like by far, we were the trash people. Like we we lived in a really nice suburb of Philadelphia and. And we were hell. We were trash. I mean, it, we were loud. We slammed the door. We screamed. We we were my parents let us throw parties. They just had like teenagers party. You know, it was just <laughs> it was wild. And then my neighbors wouldn't like us because of that. And then my mom would go over and we, we would make it like they're wrong. You know, as a family, we'd be like, they're so stuck up. They're not fun or whatever. But really, they're just raising young kids around. Like they don't want their kids looking at these like drunk teenagers yeah. and stuff like that so my uh, like we didn't walk our dog we just let our dog out what people would bring the dog back and be like we let her out we don't walk her she'd be running in the streets the neighbor's oh like your dog's God. eating our garden We're like who cares <laughs> get over it which is funny because it has made me completely unhinged and i think <laughs> makes me funny but it is and i that's how i look at everything now i go i just try to look at where it's i'm very happy with my current position but anyway so my mom would go to our neighbor's house and go, I really think you should come to Landmark. So it's like she's telling this person she has something wrong with them, with her. Yeah. And she would go again and again. It's like, Mom, you psycho. Like, stop doing it. And then so I, I did it with my parents. And they finally talked me into it. And I did it with them. And I felt that thing. And then I was like, I'm going to call my teacher. and apply. You know, like all these kind of, it was an unsafe area for me. And then I went back to New Mexico to school and I started doing it in New Mexico. I just see them as like Herbalife or doTERRA. Mm -hmm. it, it is, there's a lot of Herbalife people that go there. Multi-level marketing. A lot yeah, of people do Herbalife at Landmark. A and lot. doTERRA, right? It's like mm -hmm. that same that same exact formula. And they probably yeah. took that formula from Landmark because it was And effective. Landmark took it from other people. I mean, it's all from a lot of it's like <laughs> and, and Gestaltian <laughs> theories. And, yeah. But so... My parents, I had ended up having a falling out with my parents because I, I said to my mom, 
I was like, well, you need to choose between me and Landmark at this point. And my mom chose, chose Landmark. Landmark. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, dude. So then I didn't talk to her for a couple months. And that was really, I would say that was like the worst time of my life, not talking they to my family. That's, so like, that's like um, in Scientology when they call you an SP, like a suppressive mm-hmm. person. You were technically yeah. the suppressive and for person. for years, my parents would, and what really upset me, after I left and then we decided to come back and I just... You know, actually, one of the things in Landmark they say is you just, they go, like, chocolate, vanilla, choose. What? Like, you have to just choose. Like, chocolate, or, like, you just choose. Yeah. Like, either you have this or you don't. I know. <laughs> What's the fucking twist? There's no strawberry? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but, um, so kind of just, like, you either, like, have your parents the way they are or you don't have your parents. Wow. And I did, you know, like, I do feel that way a lot with my parents. Where, and I've, I've, I know a lot about my parents and I've grown a lot. So I do, I have a lot of compassion for them and the choices that they've made and, I just choose to like love them no matter what. Yeah. And just continue my relationship with them because yeah. I I am obsessed with them and I love them. I respect that. And, and it was so bad when I wasn't talking about it. I would wake up crying every morning. It was so bad. People it's oh, making me like sad even thinking about it. it was oh, so bad. I really understand that. A lot of times people will say to me, like, you're so lucky, you're so close with your parents. And I always think like you know, that's like something that I've really made happen. Yeah. I, that is, I've made that happen. It totally. Like I work for it. I accept things. Yeah. They accept it. Like, it's not just like, oh, we're a perfect family. Yeah. Well, we saw your special. Nobody thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh my God. <laughs> but do you, does any part of you at least feel, because I remember you said that in quarantine, like your parents are doing great because they're. I came to, this is the conclusion I came to after all of this, because my brothers were getting upset too. We're like, why are they, they're spending all their money on this fucking these programs like my parents work for them well my dad doesn't but my mom volunteers and works and then is still paying so she's paying to work for them it's they've convinced her but i look at it they're they're trying to become better people at all times my dad is spending two thousand dollars on an add seminar that he's all excited about he's 79 years old (laughs) he's like i'm the oldest person by far in this but he's still trying to like get a hold of his ad like i do love that they're still always trying to be better and and work on themselves and that's the conclusion I came to and it's just there's no reason to fight it because they won't choose you <laughs> <laughs> you just accept it so it really was um it took a while but my brothers they don't get mad about it anymore it's just Max never did it my older brother did it and we all are just kind of like all right how are you still doing this but they're happy they're busy during quarantine that's what I wanted to ask I yeah. mean like I've I've seen videos of you guys you and your dad mm-hmm. and your mom and they just look like really chipper silly people and so I I think that ultimately it's like you kind of allow people their own path to happiness if it yeah. doesn't work for you hopefully you can just like accept it in a radical you can, way and just yeah you can only scream at them that they dropped you have to get raped so many times <laughs> before you realize they're chipper they're never going to accept this they're just going to continue being chipper <laughs> they meant what they did like when i talk to my mom about like do you regret beating me and the answer that i've yearned for years is like for her to get on her knees and beg yes. for my forgiveness. But she was just like, them's were the times. Yeah, they can't, <laughs> they can't. My mother, my mother, when I was like, why did you let me um, allow me to sleep over at my teacher's house? And my mom goes- Wait, okay, so, okay, sorry, but I derailed they did you. let me, yeah, yeah, there was a whole thing. I was being groomed and my parents were like, this is so cool, free grooming. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, oh my god, your hair is getting cut? No, mom, it's different. And they're giving me drugs. But but when I when I was trying when I was really dealing with all my drama or my trauma, I was saying to them, I was like, mom, just why? Like, if you think back, knowing what you know now, would you let me? Would you take me there? And she's like, that's just how it was back then. Kids were sleeping over at their teachers' houses, and I'm like, what? I'm like, Mom, you went to boarding school, you bitch. You went to boarding school. The teachers lived on campus. It's not the same. But by the way, years later, she found out. She goes, oh, the weirdest thing I just found out. She went to a a um, all-girls school in New York, sleepover school. What do you call it? Boarding school in New York. And she never, she was like, yeah, there was this cool teacher that all the cool girls got to go hang out at his house. And I was always so jealous. 
Okay, and she was, I just never was invited, and I felt like such a loser. She was, I just found out. They were all being molested by him. Like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so she had felt left out, so, so she lived she was, through you. She was thought she was doing me the salad of letting me be one of these cool girls, which it did make me cool. I'll give you that. I'm pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I ain't <Wow>. basic. <laughs> That's so funny, you know. I got teacher jizzed out of basic. I never slept over a teacher's house. Yes. Well, my stepdad is actually my history teacher, so that would be weird. But do you guys find it weird that my mom and stepdad dated after my father passed away? And my stepdad, Roger, he was my high school history teacher. But I had sex with my stepbrother. What? Is that weird? I thought you were just going to say, was it weird that, you, that your stepdad <laughs> knew your dad? Not that you... F Oh my God, this is pornographic now. Isn't it? I've always felt kind of cringe about it, but I thought, looking back, I'm like, no, like we were friends first. It's like, my a, mom, this like, is like a bad, this is like the bad twist in the movie. Wait, you guys, like, this is just. Our parents are getting married? It's just clueless. Yeah. And clu when oh. I watch Clueless and Paul Rudd, I, it makes me feel better. Yeah. Um. So I don't. Um, it's okay. But looking back now, because this is when they weren't that serious. They were dating, but they weren't living oh, together. Oh, they already soon. were dating? They were already dating. That's going to happen. Come they on. weren't that serious. Is there serious. still any vibes between you and your stepbrother? He's, he he killed himself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Copy that. So, so yeah? <laughs> That's how bad it was? I think that one of the reasons that I kind of just wanted to separate myself and or not be friends with him when they did start living together was because I felt really gross about it yeah. for a long time. I think that make, that's normal. Where I'm like, now you're actually supposed to be my brother, but like, you know, we fucked like a lot of times. <laughs> was it when It wasn't when they were living together, you said? <laughs> they weren't living together yet, but they were definitely dating guys. Was it like they would go to one house and you would go to the other house? Um, no, I would, I mean, they would be there like having dinner and I'd be like, oh, me and, you know, we're just going to hang out I in like the room. It. I like it. I think it's rebellious. I think it's like, you know what? Also, I may like I it. add that, um, in <gasps> high school, I wanted nothing to do with any boy that wasn't a virgin. Like I felt really safe because I had this weird thing about STDs. So yeah. it was like, oh, if I only have sex with um, virgins, not only will I be remembered in their <laughs> brains forever, but I will absolutely avoid <laughs> STDs completely because I had a paranoia about it. I had the opposite. Wow. Was I STD chasing? I was like, have you <laughs> fucked a hundred women? I'm ready. It's just funny because you always hear like the sick guys that like only want a pure virgin. But, like, and we've met one. I'm a sick here. guy. Yeah, that's that's me. He like, needed to be clean and pure for you. And shy and meek. <laughs> and I just was so hypersexual that, that I had a type. And I now I looking back, I'm like, gosh, like that seems... Um, kind of creepy but it seems like a fear of vulnerability and a fear of like you would be in full control of that they're not going to hurt you yeah they're, and the std wise too like they're not going to hurt you physically mm -hmm. they're not going to hurt you emotionally you'll have control which could have a lot to do with your parents' age your parents age difference too you're yeah. not wanting to be like have like a more powerful is that still your type um virgins shy <laughs> Bobby does a shy character. No, it really does. I told Bobby that he would have been someone I would have absolutely had sex with. Why? He, just because he was so, he called himself super unfuckable, mm. very just not great with girls, that I would, you would have been on my radar 100%. <laughs> I liked fat boys on Me BMX too. bikes. I liked fat boys. Me fat too. boys with no cars and BMX bikes, and they would lurk in my bushes. Well, <laughs> listen, it, let's be real. It does feel good to be like, do a favor, like, where they're like psyched charitable <laughs> yeah where they're like fuck yeah exactly but then they'd always i would date the fat guys and then they would be so mean to me and i'm like i am giving you a gift <laughs> and then after me their girlfriends would always be like way hotter than they should have gotten because i upped their yeah like it's for life you give them something for life i know yeah you give them that confidence to know that they can that the the, the world is their oyster mm -hmm. and they can get any woman of their choosing <laughs> so you are being charitable in that way i think that's god's work you're boosting their confidence to say you can have anybody but then it, it boosts too high i mean yeah. it always backfired i'm like okay <laughs> fucking mean making my mom cry piece of shit oh you guys i wanted to tell you since you talked about being um um fucked with with a teacher yeah 
um, this is what I wanted to say. So I ne have never been, I've never had relations with a teacher, but one time- Because your mom was dating all of them. Right, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> but and quite slut. possibly worse is I was, this was the third time that I was locked up and put in a 5150 -150 hold. What? <laughs> 5150 hold is if you are I, I Esther's know what, dream. Yeah, I know what it is, but you had it three times? Three it's times on three. Esther's vision board. <laughs> <laughs> because I was a really, you know, I was, I, as Annie puts it, I was a refugee. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking refugee. I had come to the, you know, from the Philippines and America was really new to me. Um, I had a dying father, obviously, because he was 97,000 years oh old. My God. And uh, I was new to this country, so I was a really depressed teenager. I just couldn't find my bearings in America. And a lot of a lot of times I tried to kill myself and I would OD. But the third time that I, I Were you OD'd, trying to die die or were you trying to I was trying to, to die die. Yeah. Oh god. I was trying to absolutely like be gone. I just could be not so cope. Sad if she oh. died. We'd be so poor. Let's have her funeral. <laughs> Let's do her life funeral. Her live funeral. No, this is making me sad. But I wanted to tell you there's Esther, a twist to this. You should be sad more often. <laughs> Honestly, it's shocking you're not sad all the time. <laughs> when I was at, uh, the last time I was locked up, I was locked up in this place in Torrance for three weeks. And all the girls had a crush on one of, he wasn't a therapist. He did run group therapy on occasion, but I think he was more like right below like a social worker. So he just worked in this facility mm. with. Oh, I um, know where this is going and I'm getting so mad. And all the girls I'm thought he turned was. I'm getting turned on. <laughs> <laughs> all the girls thought he was so hot. And I was just so in a spiraling down that I didn't pay attention. But on the day that I finally got out of there, he helped me pack my things and, um, before I left, he slipped me his number. Oh. And How I, old were you? I was 17. <gasps> this is right before I left for college. And I could not help myself. I was so enamored by his Aeropostal shirt. <laughs> and immediately I called him and we hooked up a <gasps> lot of times. He had kids. <gasps> He was single. He was a single dad. But imagine was he a comedian? that. <laughs> you always hook up a lot of times. A lot of times. You're I've a never repeat had customer. Always. I've never had a boy have sex with me and never call. <laughs> I don't think I've had it either, but I've definitely ended it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I call them mini romances. Yeah. But I had a mini romance, a very inappropriate one with this man. And um, I, I never thought it was wrong at all. Like there wasn't a part of me that thought, oh yeah, this is this shouldn't be allowed. But yeah. you guys, he was in a psych facility. He worked it's in a so psychiatric facility and he slipped me his number. That's in Los Angeles. You know what I mean? So it's like, these are the stories that like, we really just bad. don't know are happening every day. That's such an abuse of power. I always feel like because I went to a bad kid's school that we were preyed upon because we were kids at risk so that we weren't trustworthy. Yeah. No, they always go yeah. like child molesters. Mm -hmm. They they don't go for like the rich kids. Yeah. They go for the broken down ones. Oh my God. Do you want to hear something that I, I got a DM from a kid that is currently going to my high school? <gasps> Yeah. And he said, I thought your high school. No, it did not get shut down. Nothing <laughs> happened. My parents were donating money to it until two years ago. And I was like, are you donating money to the school that molested me? I just can't believe that. <laughs> they're just in denial. It's like they're never going to accept it. But but I so not only did I have my experience with my teacher, I there's just so many have unfolded. And my graduating class was 17 students. It was a it's a very small school. So, like, a few people didn't get fucked, and I feel really, that is, like, so embarrassing. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would have been the one that slid by. <laughs> but it is, like, like one, so another one of our teachers just got caught. He was the disciplinarian, and he was the one that I looked back at my school, and I went, at least he, tr like, he believed in us enough to, like, have rules and give us punishments, which we never actually were punished, but he was just a little mean to us. And then it just came out that he, they found all this kitty porn on him and he had like from infants to seven year olds so we just weren't his type was the only reason he lost oh us. Oh my god. But it was just so bad. I mean it's so bad. If only so he had set eyes on me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you could have gotten your diddle. But it so then I'm like this fucking school and then people were because I talked about my experience on on Marin's podcast. No I've never it. heard it. Yeah you'll tell it to us next week. Yeah I just get or something like that. I just get a little sometimes it gets me a little too I get a little too in it. But you know what we have 
the we have years to the yeah. rest of our lives. Yeah, totally. Say yeah. it. So everyone had heard. So the you know there's a group of people that know about this, but so people always tag me when there's a new molester. So on <laughs> Facebook, it was like, oh my god, another one of the fucking teachers. And then some of the kids were like, oh my god, I didn't know they. And was like, oh honey. <laughs> Pizza, we did call you Pizza Face for a reason. Like, oh. <laughs> like all of us got diddled. Even my friend, I have a friend who I don't want to tell his story. I, I'm sure he'd be okay with it, but he wrote a book about how great the school was. Oh and Lord. then we became friends years later. We were enemies in high school. We became friends years later. And he heard my story. He goes, I didn't even like notice that was happening. He goes, I really wish I'd known that before I wrote this book. <laughs> and then he, his mom told him that one of his like mentor teachers had been writing him love letters oh, and had, God. and had the reason he left our school is because they confronted him and he admitted that he was in love with my friend and he fled to another school. Like they never arrested him. It was all about like hush hush. Yeah. So anyway, so I got this DM from this kid the other day and he, he was like, I'm a current student at the school and I've heard on podcasts what happened. No one at the school knows any of this. There's no public record. I don't know why there's no record of this. My parents probably signed a deal that was like, sure, we'll keep it a secret. <laughs> as long as you traumatize our daughter a little bit more, just make sure you fuck her up for a couple more months and we'll. But so, so he was like, I don't know what to do with this information. He sent me his school ID. So I know he's like, I feel like everyone should know. He's like, I've always felt like there was something really shady going on. It feels racist, like all this stuff. And I, I just don't even know what to say. I'm, I don't, I don't feel comfortable talking to a kid, by the way. Anyone yeah. under 18, I'm not speaking uh -uh. to. Uh -uh. DM uh -uh. me. Directly yeah. DM Esther. <laughs> Esther, you don't have, Skokie didn't have diddlers? Not, I know nothing of that. Unless no. they hit on her now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not have that. I mean, yeah, I don't really have, my trauma doesn't feel so real when I talk to other comedians. Oh my God, when I, okay, I went on a date with this guy who's a comedian and we were sharing our like trauma stories, we were in his hot tub and I just got done, I was like, yeah, and they dropped me off to get raped and um, they're still donating to the school, but it's fine, you know, whatever. It'll be, it'll be okay. Like, I love them. <laughs> Vanilla or chocolate chews. And he's like, oh, yeah, when I was little, my mom, I won um, Class Clown, and I was so embarrassed by that. And my mom um, was so proud that I was a Class Clown that she put, like, a clown in my room. <laughs> he's like, can you believe she did that? I was like, <laughs> I was like, in every hole, in every <laughs> hole. <laughs> I was yeah. just like looking at him like oh my and he literally lives a way more, more fucked up unhappy that man doesn't sleep sometimes I do worry about that in therapy because I have a specific I have a, a therapist who handles specifically a certain type of trauma um, and sometimes I wonder if she just looks at me and says you are not that important like you're you absolutely like you should see my other patients yeah it's all relative though and I think I think it's healthy to have that feeling though yourself because we should be kind of but I heard that like there is such a thing as like toxic positivity when you tell other people like oh you know it could be worse yeah. look at that mm. person like, I just don't think that that's the correct way you have way. three meals you, exactly or like when I last year when I had my serious depression funk I'm like you crack. have several meals a day <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend that was like just get out Outside, exercise, get uh -huh. in the sunlight. Exercise I'm is like, the funniest. I'm not advice. a plant. I don't. And also, you're like, I, but sunlight. I am physically a plant and not able to exercise. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's another <laughs> thing too. Like, anytime they put like tips for anxiety or panic attacks, like they don't consider the fact that, like, even for me, I was talking to my therapist yesterday. I was like, look, I know that we are learning all of these coping mechanisms, and while I employ them sometimes and they work. There are times when I'm so panicked that I'm frozen and if I feel like I feel like if I get out of this position, like doom will happen, you yeah. know? So it's like I can't even get up and walk no. across yeah. the room, much less fucking exercise. Yeah. No. Like so I hate that like I just don't like this. Um, you know, on Instagram where they just put bullet points and I'm like, there's so much missing yeah. context there. It's not that simple. This is why I want to talk more about because I, I ended up starting Lexapro, an antidepressant for anxiety, and it I couldn't be better on it. And that's why, like, the people that say, like, just take a deep breath. I'm like, no, there's something wrong with my brain. And, like, I take medicine Not now. just your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Don't um, forget the crotch rot. <laughs> you have crotch rot. <laughs> Do we want to take a banana break? Yes, let's take a banana break. Okay. Thank you. I'm traumatized. I just deep throated. I'm like, I was molested. <laughs> Imagine if Annie. <laughs> <laughs>
I actually am she not gonna. Bananas. I don't like bananas. She's, but hates thank them. You. Look, she, you're traumatizing her. <laughs> oh my god, she hates that you've made her whole. I, I know. She sounds like sad. This. <laughs> this is her molested. I really don't. Do you know? This, it actually was a lot like that. For being me. molested. <laughs> <laughs> when Just I, hold it. I don't want to. <laughs> Um, when I was little, my grandma gave me a doll for Christmas, and I was so anti girly stuff and hated the doll so much that I made, I threw a big fit, and I said, when we drive home, the doll has to be in the trunk. And they put you in there instead? <laughs> I think that's why my grandma, w- I feel like that moment was when my grandma was like, I'm done with this bitch. You, you can't make me <laughs> she laugh. She died. She's like, I'm dying. I'm you can't make there. me laugh when I'm eating a banana because all the mush. <laughs> we picked the most phallic snack. Also, I really, you the way you, any one normal person, that's a correct way to eat a banana. Yeah. I just want to say that first, but I cannot stand how people eat bananas. How do they eat them? I cannot have saliva touching my next bite. Oh, okay. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to cut like that, like okay. so, and then you're supposed to, huh? Whose and then rules section are these? them off. Now this you're touching you. it. No, no, no. You're sectioning them off. There's, so there's no saliva on either end. This is crazy. There's a way. But who did you come up with this? I I think I don't like dried saliva on food, even if it's my own. I have lipstick on all my shit. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so just so the listeners know, we decided we're gonna do banana breaks. So when things get too intense mm-hmm. and crazy, we're just gonna have some. They just left me hanging earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you could have called the banana break. We're just know, gonna we're just gonna chill. Maybe be quiet. Maybe Annie will shut the fuck up <laughs> for a minute and eat a banana. I actually don't like bananas. Why? So because uh, other people do. I because it would be easy if she liked them. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't really like them. So I guess her her grandmother gave her banana and a doll. <laughs> Producer George is gonna have to figure out the special treat for Esther for next time. Oh my god, it's gonna be the most annoying treat. Give no, her I'll the messiest food, like a really powdered mochi. <laughs> um. So we're just gonna chill in the banana break zone. How's everybody feeling? But like, I honestly, I couldn't agree with this banana break more. I love it. I am a potassium freak. I get heart palpitations and anxiety, so when I have a potassium refill, I'm a whole new woman. Wow. I wish you could know this joy, Esther. Maybe I'll find, maybe I'll research what else has potassium. A potassium supplement. But you know, the wor- they're the worst because they're this big. Ugh. Well, Carlos is out of town. How are you going to get him to do that for you? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Last week's conversation about shit pile. I really thought about that for a long time. Well, I bring it up every day. I'm like, you know what I realize? I'm so glad you bring that up. Everyone that is in my life is in my shit pile. <laughs> she's either trying to. No, there's only she's the shit pile. Ob- like being obsessed with you because she's trying to shit pile you. Yeah. Or you're shit piled. You're all. It's uh. but my parents are my shit pile. My fiance is my shit pile. Everybody's my shit. My that's me. I'm in my. I'm shit crawling pile. out of that shit pile, dude. No, I'm getting you're not, out, dude. I'm getting you get you get no access to me, and you're done. <laughs> You'll be begging for me again. I want all my loved ones covered in shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why you want to give us a ride in that car? <laughs> Wait, Esther, I'm so proud of you, number one, for... I hate the way eating banana sounds on the mic, though, so I'm just going to put that out there. It's just I apologize. Esther's normal sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really proud of you for hanging on to that car for a long time. My first car in America that I owned at 24 was a Camry as well. Mm. But I traded it in for an expedition because I, I was living in Long Beach at that time, and I thought it was more... Living that life. I wanted to be, you know, more hood, and I was like, Camry's not going to gonna cut it. But, um... Eventually got impounded. But I don't own a car, you know. Nothing more what? hood than that. I don't Nothing have a car. more hood than getting your car impounded. That's mm-hmm. good. <laughs> gotcha. You gotta rack up the t- you gotta rack yes. the tickets up so high that it's it's not more worth valuable. it to get your car back from from the pound. When I first moved to LA and I was living in my rent rack, which Esther knows I was driving around in a fucking like dented neon. Do you remember the like silver neon? I'll never forget the smell. <laughs> the new, it had the new car smell. But it was a fake new car smell. Like you could tell someone had just been chain smoking in it. <laughs> And by the way, rent a rec is such a fucking racket. It's so expensive. Like, like what is back, it? It's in, it's like so long term cool. rentals for cars, but they just give you like a shitty dented car. Mm, like but a- I like I I remember doing the math and being like, this costs the same as if I rented a brand new car. It's just the only benefit was that I could crash it. Nobody would know. Mm. Do they still do rent a rec? I don't know. Ever since I stopped living in my car, they couldn't. But I remember I was. Living in the car, like sleeping in the car, I would sleep at my friend's house when I could, and then if I couldn't, whatever. And then, um, (laughs) 
I got so many tickets that I it was equaled rent. It equaled <laughs> rent. I was like, I should have just gotten a fucking apartment. I should have like just lived Bob- with Esther and Amy Chupo. That's like Bobby um, renting a car from Enterprise for like a year and a half. And he <laughs> racked up like $29,000. <laughs> I can't. It's my favorite stories. Like I know, here's here's where Bobby is actually not at fault. I knew these things about him before I dated yeah. him, before I made it official, and yet I jumped in, fucking you know, heart first, and now I'm complaining. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not fair to him. I I knew what what kind of human being he was. I should have just you know. I always look at it like we're just. Um tumbling through some of us just tumble through life like sometimes I just come to and I'm like what the fuck have I been doing like I just I'm not even paying attention it's- you know what I will say Annie the reason that you and I have just been such kindred spirits like I feel so deeply connected to you so fast is the same reason that I am so in love with Bobby I just Whoa. I- are you getting horny <laughs> Esther jealous, I just jealous, love jealous. I have a type yeah. I have a type and that is like you guys are freaks c- cut from a similar cloth where it's like even esther if you're you you are very different from each other but there is this like like there is you still fall under a certain type that makes a lot of sense to me and i feel like is more trustworthy like i can just say whatever i want to say without judgment and i can just get there fast with you i can tell you about my life and you're not gonna be like, ooh, like there's no you? rules, so it's yeah. like we're not gonna impose them on you. Well, Esther might have a feel. It's very informal. Like we're an informal yeah. bunch. Like Once you get no in the ship manners. Pile. There's <laughs> raised by wolves. <laughs> yeah, just really, yeah, wild. But also, it's comedy. Why are we gonna? Why would we do this? What's the uh, time situation? Why did you want to know? Because I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm driving you home, bitch. You are. I, you go home when I say. <laughs> You're in my shit pile today, bitch. <laughs> She's going to like break quarantine and go to get a Uber with heated seats. Yeah, I'm so f- I'm going to can I take a bath? There's enough <laughs> there's enough uh old clothes in my bag. Do you want me See? to ask Juliana to run you a hot pot? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the pool is really warm. Oh, Why don't you yeah. jump in? Yeah. It's really warm. Ooh, cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be open about what my insecurities are right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, and this happens to me every time I get serious, I feel like I'm not being funny. I'm not doing my job. No, no, no. Annie, I'm telling you, like, I even me never hearing some of your stuff before, like, I feel absolutely honored and interested and riveted and sad and all of the gamut of of emotions um, when I listen to your stories. And I think they're really important. It's so important. It's, I don't think you should feel... Insecure. We were joking throughout it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And usually I, when I listen back, I go, "Okay, there were enough jokes." Because you've you you've lived it, you've um, talked about it, and you've relived it over and over again. So it doesn't feel exciting for you to talk about. Obviously, who the fuck is excited about talking just about like, trauma? People are like on their treadmills listening to my rape all the time. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> like how many fucking they're like I could go fucking five miles listening to this bitch talk about a fucking rape. It's just like. It's gross. It's gross. And then there's, I, you know, I, I do read the comments, and then I get the people that are like, oh, my God, do we have to do this fucking sad story? I'm like, I don't want to tell it anymore. I wish I didn't know no, this story. No, I just want to know about Landmark. I don't know. But it does, it always leads into that. Is my this- mom wrote a book about me. I mean, there's, like, a lot of, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff. There's juice to be on. That's what I wanted to ask you guys. Do you think that... Um, someone can be truly inherently funny without any type of trauma or painful existence i don't i hate being that person that's like you're only funny if this and that like i don't like having hard and fast rules about that i would say that if someone (laughs) never drank there's a trauma something traumatic happened for that did you have an alcoholic (laughs) parent though i've never drank you know that yeah, but you're, are you saying you're not a traumatized, weird, <laughs> fucked up person? Are you as, you're as clean as Delia pre finding out he wasn't clean? <laughs> no, I, I, my parents never drank. And so it just wasn't like a part of the culture in my house. Culture. And my grandma was an alcoholic. Yeah. She still is. But it, that I'm saying it stems from like a, there's usually like a, you can trace it back yeah. to a, mm. a thing. But also I, I think. 
I I don't I would just I just have all, had such a crazy life that I can't imagine not being had trauma and I don't know that maybe not having trauma especially in this world where everyone's like my trauma my mm-hmm. trauma every podcast you go on is been like tell me the worst thing that's ever happened to you I'm like <laughs> Jesus nice to meet you but okay <laughs> I don't know what do you think Kyla um I Bobby always talks about this theory as to why he thinks like Koreans and Filipinos are inherently more f- what he considers funnier than let's say like Chinese or like oh my god um, I love Asian Japanese racism. people yeah the the inter Asian oh, you know so comparisons <laughs> and he says it's basically it's a historical um, it's a historical thing where it's like you know if you've been colonized and if you've been raped and pillaged as a culture you cannot like um, comedy is mm-hmm. its survival like that's why I find like the Filipino spirit to be so. Um, like it, I have never seen anything like it. Like their homes could be ravaged, roofs off from like right. a typhoon, and the next day they're happily like swimming in flood water, and the kids are playing, and everyone is just like, "It's okay, it's Mother Nature. We'll rebuild." Like there's so much joy there, and for a third world country, there is more joy there than there is in, in America. Like everyone, when I first came here, the one thing I said was, "There are so many rules, and everybody is sad and angry." Like that was my observation as a teenager. And I missed the joy of back home. Yeah. Even with so that's Bobby's theory is that funny does come. It has to come from a pain, whether you're conscious about it or you're not. Well, well I think I've, it's a defense mechanism. Also just similar, like Jewish people are tend to be funny and yes. you know, we had our little thing. And you know, Hitler really he had a good point. I mean, he was like, they're getting a little sluggish on Annie. their punchlines, they're slowing down. Annie. We're gonna need to really bring them up. It was like it was like going to UCB for five five okay. co- five level five. UCB. I don't have the energy to fight that right now. Guys, I'm so fucking cold. I'm so fucking cold that this podcast is over. You should be grateful over. you're cold. Your people were very hot. At one point. <laughs> Andrew! Andrew Letterman! <laughs> I need a fucking blanket. Someone needs to give me a blanket. I'm going to freeze. I got to get out of here. This is my favorite part of the episode. If anyone's wondering, this is the clip. Just Esther screaming. Do the WAP dance now. <laughs> Esther, generate heat. <laughs> she can't help it. She can't not do the WAP. Uh, Crush we, the headphones. Make it worth it. Okay, we could we could wrap. It's been a pleasure as always. Um, thank you, Annie, for <laughs> for your landmark stories. Yeah, I feel like we gave people a lot of spank bank today. Kalila had sex with her brother. <laughs> yeah, that actually is. Annie had sex with her teacher. Oh, oh God. no, I didn't eat just on Remind me to tell you my other um, sex with my other brother story. Oh, my God. There's been more than one Listen, brother Listen, I have a twin, and I've resisted all this time. <laughs> He's hot. He looks just like me. You guys, thank you so much for listening to Bloodbath. Uh, we're three fat old whores. And if you want more of this, like this video and subscribe. And- Ew, listen to her sex voice. This is this is the voice of someone who didn't get molested. <laughs> She's just trying. She's trying to make up for old time. <laughs> for lost time. That's been our show. See you next week. Ew. Is everyone comfortable with Esther being the take the reins person? It's disgusting. <laughs> she can't even do it seriously. She has to gyrate while she's doing it. Business Esther is just like in a set. No, you're like a sex worker when you do it. Every time you do it, you're like, I'm I think that was good. You.